I was really nervous about um, giving evidence, but on hearing the speakers before me, it actually made me feel really empowered to go in there because I, I was coming from a different angle and I did have different insight and experience. And I thought, you lot can't pull the wool over my eyes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys, if any of you are watching. Um, but yeah, I, I found a very empowering experience. I think one thing which probably made a difference, which they probably didn't expect as well, was, um, you know, I revealed in the inquiry that not only was I an advocate from, a, you know, having dairy inside experience, I wasn't just this this weedy vegan that, you know, never got her hands dirty and, and didn't really know anything. You know, I, I had that side of the industry with me. Um, but also, you know, I'm actually a mother who has lost a child. So that's something that, you know, I've got a pretty, what with my dairy background and, and what with actually having lost a child, having given birth to a child and have him pass away two days later, I know what that loss is like. And I think I was, you know, I was able to relay that somewhat in, um, in the hearing. And it's, you know, you, it's a, it's so hard. <laughs> I guess one, one good way to put it the other night, I was talking to a friend of my mother's and he's in his eighties and He's Australian and he is, you know, he's been around a while. So he's, he's pretty, he's, he's pretty opinionated on everything from rugby into farming. And he's been around for a while. So he knows a lot about lots of things. And so we got into this discussion about veganism and, and why, you know, um, but surely, you know, cows are, are more ecologically sound, you know, it's, it's, it's better for the planet that then we, you know, grow all this, these crops, you know, even though we're feeding what 98% of them to our animals in the first place. So we were getting into all that. And um, my husband was starting to get a bit sort of head up because this guy wouldn't back down, you know, oh, but I got an argument for everything. And in the end, I, I spoke to him about what happens to cows and how their babies are taken away. And I said, I know what it's like to lose one child, to have one baby, you know, taken from you, you, you know, someone taken away. Um, it's actually 26 years ago this week. So uh, we shared the same birthday and, you know, it's, it doesn't get easier. You live with it, but it's just how it is. You know, I, I've got this saying that uh, I don't think life gives you any more than you can handle, you know? <laughs> so these, these things happen for a reason, but you know, I know what it's like to have someone take my baby away forever. And even though I knew what happened to him and, you know, it was still felt so powerless. There was absolutely nothing I could do. Nothing would bring him back. But I knew that everything that was done for him, that, that could have been done. But for these cows, they've got no idea, you know, apart from the ones that have their babies murdered in front of them, they've got no idea where their babies go. You know, 26 years later, I'm still wondering about my son. You know what would he look like now what if things have been different where is he what's he doing you know and for me i went through that once and that was the worst thing that could possibly happen i think as, as far as i'm concerned you know in, in my years on this planet it's the most horrendous thing it's something that's that scars you and is always with you you learn to carry it but it's always with you but for me you know once was bad enough for cows we're doing this year after year after year and people still don't realize that you know cows are like humans and that they have to carry their babies for nine months in their body and feel them moving and give birth to them which is no blooming small thing you know and then we just come along and take their babies year after year and i know a lot of vegans that um I've spoken to and, and activists as well, which I guess is another reason why I'm glad to have this insight. You know, it, it seems to be a thing that they say, oh, cows get milk for, for five years and then they go down and, and then they get sent to slaughter. Well, for one thing, if a cow can't get up, she's not sent to slaughter because she has to be able to get on the truck. So, you know, over here, you just end up as, as pet food or something like that. But um, yeah, there's this perception that cows only get to live until they're five years old. I knew many cows that were 10 years old. And in fact, you know, I knew I knew one cow in particular that um, was 16 years old when she finally went on the truck. And you know, considering the first cow gives birth um, at two two years old, roughly, um, that was 14 babies she had taken away from her. And so, you know, it's no wonder they look so downtrodden, so depressed, and so wretched. And so somehow, after a few wines and getting a bit fired up with this this 80 year old chap, you know, I put all this out there to him I said look mate this is what it's like you know and this is what we are doing again and again and again and even now people your age are not realizing that you know this has to happen for you guys to drink milk and he just stopped and just looked at me you know dead in the eye and said 
I've never thought of it like that. And I thought, you know, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. This is this is what I'm here for, you know. <laughs> so so yeah, that's a long long-winded explanation, but yeah, I guess I've got a pretty unique perspective in in both of those areas. <laughs>